Hello and welcome to this tour of the 52 Blogs Project website. Um, what I'm going to do is just go through how I came up with the branding and basically just walk you through it step by step. How I went from the you know the theme to you know my actual completed website. So first of all, I started at the beginning um, on a piece of paper with a pen in my notepad and I wrote out some ideas of what I wanted the blog to look like. So things, so the aim of the site, uh, so what I wanted it to do, um, what sort of customers, you know, what my ideal audience was for the blog and branding notes. So what I wanted to look like and what sort of brand perception I wanted to give it off, to give off. So this sort of information, before you even start you know, down at the nitty gritty and on the computer and thinking about what you want, actually getting anything started, just have some ideas of what you want because otherwise you could spend hours and hours and hours searching for things and trying things and they're not being quite right. So know what you want first before you start looking and actually getting down to the nitty gritty of creating your website. So the second stage after I'd got my notes done was to head back online and head over to Pinterest, which is where I start by creating a brand inspiration board. Um, this is actually live, so you can check this. This isn't a secret board. You can actually go and look at this board if you want. Um, I will put a link to it in the description of this video. So first of all, I knew I wanted something fairly simple, and I was thinking maybe just black and white and shades of grey. So I started off collecting some colour palette ideas with the shades of grey, and then I came across this photograph here. And this photograph, I absolutely loved the very pale spots of yellow in it, because it was lovely and bright, but not overpowering. And I thought, well, that's cool. Perhaps I should, could find a different colour to add into, um, into the, you know, the colour palette for the blog. So I had a look, and I thought about maybe using pink, which is why I've got this one here, because obviously I've got the pink as part of my badass business mum brand. Um, but I just kept going back and I thought, like here, I've got a tiny little bit of turquoise. I really love this turquoise as well. I think this is going to be a, a future colour scheme for something. Um, for one of the, the weekly blogs I do, has got to have this colour in it because I love this. Um, but I decided in the end to go for yellow. So I started then looking for pictures with some yellow in. So I did a search for yellow and black. So I really liked this idea um, with the just sort of pale grey and the black and the white and just a few odd spots of yellow throughout it when we, without being too dominant. So that was the sort of idea I was looking for. So as you can see I've collected website ideas, I've collected icons, I thought these are really cool with just the little ticks on and I thought obviously you could maybe colour then those colours to match with your brand colours. And I say brand boards, logo ideas, fonts, um, I love this because of the fives, obviously there was going to be a 52, so I lo loved all these different fives there. Um, so that was how I came up with this. So I've got some, like I said, font ideas, um, colour ideas, website design ideas. So I've gathered all that together, and then I wanted to actually create a mood board. So to do the mood board, I went over to Unsplash. Um, so what I did, I went through and I collected some photographs and I started off with collecting relevant colours. So I've got some, lots of black and white ones with sort of cool geometric shapes. So what is the geometric shapes, the very straight lines, um, and if there was curves, like these sort of very smooth, perfect curves. And of course, a lot of pictures with yellow in, but again, yellow with the straight lines. So we've got, say, all the perfect circles. So that was what I collected, various different yellow and black and white and grey photographs to go with the idea and the colour theme I wanted to go for. And also, the later photos I collected, as you can see, are not necessarily got the yellow and the black and white. This one in particular, I love the shapes, so I saved that one because I love the shapes. Again, this one as well, you've got the geometric, the lines and the shapes and the shades. I thought that was really, really good. And um, later on up here, I've collected ones with letters and numbers as well, because the typography was obviously going to be, I wanted the typography of my logo to be quite strong. So I collected some ideas 
of nice type that I liked as well. So I collected all those together and then created a inspiration board, which is yeah. This is the inspiration board I collected. And as you can see, I've saved some of these photographs are exactly as I downloaded them from Unsplash and others I've edited slightly. So this one here was that blue photograph I just showed you, but I've just made it black and white up the contrast a bit. And the same I've done with this one. I've made that one, changed that to black and white and changed the contrast a bit just to, because it was the shapes and the patterns. And again, this topography that I really, really liked. So I wanted to include that in there. So again, had to change the colours to suit my colour scheme. So what I've chosen these particular um, images because of, mostly because of the straight lines. At this, I love the straight lines in this picture. And again, this one, these lovely parallel straight lines. Of, um, and of course, the yellow and the black as well. And again, the colour scheme. So I've gone, you know, for the yellows, the blacks, greys, and these lovely shapes and things as well. So that was my mood board. Now, when I'd finished with the mood board, I hopped on the computer and thought about the sort of logo I wanted. Now, sometimes the logo design can take quite a while. In this case, it actually didn't because I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to, what I wanted my logo to look like. I had done a few sketches and a few drawings before I hopped onto the computer. So this was the first one that I did. Um, this was just a random, let's see what it looks like. So I just picked whatever first yellow I came to. So this was a bit bright. I wasn't too keen on that yellow. So as you can see, I changed it. And I've also changed the font later on. I really, really liked this font. But the reason I changed it was because it's um, it was a font I downloaded onto my computer. And I couldn't work out how to upload it to use it on WordPress. And because I'd used another sans serif font as my body text and for my headers on for my headings on my blog site it looked really really odd because it kind of matched but didn't quite match um this lovely sans serif font in my logo so i changed that to this font here which is called railway this one is called london it's free as well it's a good it's a nice font so you can download that just for free and railway is actually a free google font as well so I changed this and I also darkened up the yellow to make a slightly more sort of orange warmer tone yellow and as you can see I've changed very slightly from this to this and this font I actually really like the space it's a lot more there's some more spacing between the letters so it's more spread out so I've moved my dot out a little bit further and added a little more space between these two words here just to match the the spacing better of the actual letters. Um, and then I had a little play around here just with some lines underneath. I like this version. I'm not too keen on that. I think that's just too chunky. Um, but I like this. Um, I might do something with this in the future. And then finally I made just a little square watermark logo that I can perhaps stick on, on photographs. And I've got something similar to this as my favicon. Just just got a yellow background instead. So that was the logo sort of concepts, the ideas I had. And from then, the next stage was to go online and actually find a theme to work with. Finding a theme to work with took me absolutely ages because there was so much choice and I was so confused. Because I come from using Square, Squarespace and the free version of WordPress, I was used to themes and templates having restrictions. So when I had a look through the themes and there was things that were mentioned you could change, it was like, can I only change this or can I edit whatever I want or whatever. So I was a little bit confused, but I eventually I went for this one by Colorlib, which is called Ildi. And the main reason I went for this, first of all, is just because I liked the look of it. I thought it looked really attractive. Um, I knew I wanted this uh, menu and header set up with the logo over here and the menu up here. So this was like, I knew that was what I wanted to look at. And um, it had good good ratings, which I had a lot of ratings, and they were all good, well, mostly good ratings. And I really liked as well, it's got a demo page, so I could have a look at what it would actually look like. So I haven't actually used this index page on my blog design, not yet. I may well do in the future, but all I've got on my, my home page the way I've set mine up is just the straight blog page. 
so that's what it looks like so again I liked you know like I said the layout here um, and it's just dead simple you know you've got the a sidebar read more buttons and your footer at the bottom it was just nice and simple it was what I wanted and the other thing I really liked about it was this support forum and I could see from the support forum that it was regularly updated any tickets that had been posted the guys had got back to them um, each individual theme that these that Colorlib make have got its own support forum as well so it was really really easy to find any information I wanted about changing it so that was one of the major reasons that I went for this was it being a free theme um, I wanted to know I could look up lots of information if I needed it to make any changes so that was a major reason and the other thing I wanted was that it was mobile responsive which to be honest I think most WordPress themes probably are these days but that was obviously a deal breaker as well that it responded nicely on mobile so that was how I came up with the theme that was the one I chose and I really really liked it I'm really pleased that I chose it it's, you know I like what I've come up with looks wise and I said it was really easy to edit as well and lots and lots of information available so I was really pleased with that so the next stage now I've got my logo and I've installed my theme I actually went over to edit it so as you can see it looks a wee bit different than the actual you know the demo version so I, of course I added in my own logo um, I added in a header as well and one of the things I did with the header was got rid of the the title in the middle like on the demo version I got rid of that I got rid of this and that was the first thing I had to find out how to do on the support forum was to find out how to get rid of this title and these dots so that was one thing I got rid of just mainly because I'd already put, um, you know, description, my tagline as part of my image. So I wanted that on there. And again, the other major changes, I didn't make a huge amount of changes, but the main ones I did was with the colour. So I just changed the hover colour on the menu, changed the colours of the read more buttons. So anywhere where the pale yellow was for the theme, so mainly with the links, I've changed to my own more orange, warmer yellow and I changed the widgets in the footer so a lot of this I could just change with the WordPress dashboard so just from appearance and then customize so in the customize section I've got all these various menus here that I can change this is the sort of built-in customizations that came with the theme that I chose so, which is really, really easy to change. Just click on what I wanted to change. And um, just, you know, uploaded pictures or change text or whatever I wanted to do. So that was how I did things like the header. I changed um, adding in the logo was part of the customize. It was there under the customize option. And all the rest of it. I did using CSS, which I tried to do with the built-in editor from this WordPress dashboard, from this editor here, but for some reason didn't seem to work very well. So instead, I had a look online and actually on the forum from the ILD theme, there was a recommendation for a CSS plugin called Easy Custom CSS, I think it is. Again, there's, I, there will link to that as well. So when I use this plugin, which is this one here and I put in the exact same CSS into the plugin here and it worked so I thought right well that's fine happy with that so basically every all my CSS edits I then put into this here so this is things that I've changed now this looks quite a lot but it's not actually that complicated because a lot of it is changing colors so things like the links the navigation um, the buttons you know all of this has got its own instructions there so that's why it looks like there's quite a lot there but it's not really um, and even some of it I've copied over whole sections and only actually changed things like the font and that sort of stuff too so it looks quite complicated but it's actually not really so that was that and um, my sidebar I changed I did change quite a bit on the sidebar but again it wasn't too complicated because this my headings here they're actually images 
So all I did when I changed my sidebar was I used the widgets. All of these are simply text widgets. So I've just included them as text widgets and then just added my own very simple HTML just to insert an image. I did try a plugin with it, but it didn't do quite what I wanted it to do. And because I've got a basic knowledge of HTML, it's, best, it's real simple. It's just adding images. Um, just one or two lines of basic HTML, which I've added to the text widgets to get this content on my sidebar. So this, again, was just an image. This here is from my Etsy shop, but that code you just literally get from Etsy and again, just plug it into the widget, into the text widget and it does it all for you. This here is a recent post. That was the only one that I actually didn't do as a text. That's just a recent post widget that came with the theme, which I like. So this is the text widget here to get this image in um, for the HTML to upload this image as the heading. And then this is the actual theme widget. And then I just added in some links to my favourite design resources. That's for Creative Market and the Hungry JPEG, which are two of my favourites for getting design elements, logo designs, whatever, from. All right, and these here, my little social icons, now they link through to my shop. It's obviously YouTube and my other social networks there as well. And the icons themselves were free icons that I downloaded from freepick.com. And I just changed the colours just to fit in with my own brand colours. And they are uploaded into a widget as well. Um, this one, I think. So just links, image links um, with HTML. And then I used a tiny bit of CSS to get them to line up properly and actually that took me a long time because I was really really over complicating it so this is just real simple CSS so this is my heading um, image source and then a link to the image as it's saved in the WordPress media library and then the alt text for SEO for Google to find and then the ones I've got as links Obviously, just my link image there, the AHREF, and the link to where I want them to go to, and then the image source. So that was. So that is super simple in there. And then just a little bit of CSS to make them line up next to each other rather than in a list downwards. So, yeah, so that's that. And then, of course, I added the featured image and Pinterest friendly images as well that were, you know, that used the same fonts as I've used on the rest of my branding. So my brand fonts and my brand colours for my social sharing as well. And then the other thing I really liked was, oh, no one here, let me show you. If we go to an actual blog post. So that's the featured image that I've done, which is slightly smaller than a Pinterest image. So I had to create two versions. So I've got this is my featured image. So that one is actually quite nice for sharing on Facebook, a more Facebook friendly size. And I've also created a Pinterest friendly branded version of my blog title as well. So that is that in there. And then the very last thing was I found a free social sharing plugin that I could change the colours on. So I really like this one. This is from Shareaholic. And I like this because I could customise the buttons that I included and also the colours as well. So that is that. And I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough and that was helpful if you were looking for some ideas on how to brand and set up your own blog. In the link, in the link, in the description is a link to this blog post. And as you can see at the bottom of this blog post is a detailed list of how you can basically recreate what I've done there. So the fonts I've used, the plugins I've used, where I've got my photographs from, the themes, so my word, you know, where I got my hosting from, um, it's all there and how I set it all up. Um, 
and yeah please hit subscribe there will be one of these uh, branding walkthrough video tours every week and I hope to see you soon thanks very much for watching